Welcome to the Rare Find Voices podcast. My name is Robin Koenig, and I'm the CEO and founder of Rare Find, the creator of the Disaster to Dream dating solution and the Rare Find Three Steps to Brilliance. But even more importantly, I'm a mom of four teenagers, a wife, a certified professional coach, and a public speaker. And I'm an expert at helping women use their gifts to take intentional action and get intentional results. I love challenging people to think differently, see things differently, and then do things differently to create powerful change in their life. Each week, I'll share my voice or bring forward another rare fine voice to help you uncover your gifts, step into that power, and allow your brilliance to shine through. Believe me, I know how it feels to struggle with feeling good enough, pretty enough, smart enough, successful enough, and deal with major life transitions such as getting married, getting divorced, going through a career change, and having kids. I've been through so many of the same things in my life journey, and I understand the pain as well as the steps that it takes to get through the messy stuff to the ultimate freedom and joy that you desire. This podcast is for you if you want to be more confident in your own skin, transform your mindset, and get out of your own way to be happy and free to live the life that you want. You know that you can, but you just don't know how. And it's hard and it's real, but it's your time to shine. You don't need to hide. All of those beautiful bits and pieces are who you are. The imperfections and all without the shame, the guilt, or the fear. If you're open and ready to transform and you want to show the world your greatest gifts, then keep listening. Today is the day you choose to make this commitment to yourself because you are a rare find. Hey friends, it's Robin Koning again, back for another episode of Rare Find Voices podcast. So today I cannot wait to talk about this topic and... It is all about one word, two letters, the word no. And the whole idea behind today's topic is that there is a power in using this word and saying no and loving it. So I want to jump right in here because this is such a really, a really interesting conversation and I have it with people regularly because it's like this word no has such an intense response, whether, you know, how you take it or even how you're able to say it, right? It, you know, how it feels to receive it can be like a really, um, you know, like how we handle receiving it can be really difficult. And I say this from experience of having heard the word no so many times in my career, um, you know, back in my dating days, I mean, gosh, how many times do you hear the word no? And you're just like, oh, like it's like a little stab to the heart. You feel it in your gut and it doesn't always feel so good. And then when you turn it around and you have to use the word, say the word no many times and not all the time, but many times it can be so hard. And, you know, it's funny because the word no kind of has a bad rap, right? It's like, there's always an apology or a pre-frame before we use it. You know, I know for me personally, sometimes I worry about that outcome. You know, what's going to happen? How's the person going to respond? You know, there's a fear that sometimes drives our ability to like get it out. You know, our ability to be like, "Mm, I just really wanted to say no, but I didn't. And then all of a sudden we've got this like, you know, guilt, or we feel just, oh, I can't believe I just said that. I can't believe I didn't, you know, all these things come up. I can't believe this. And we're just getting all judgy on ourselves. Um, And so, you know, I want to share that the whole idea of worrying about the outcome doesn't change the situation. And saying yes, when you want to say no, doesn't change how you feel. And Ultimately, how somebody responds to what you say, yes or no, isn't in your control either, you know? So you think about some of these phrases and and we link words together. We say, no, sorry, you know, that's like a a super easy like way to be like, "Mm, no, sorry, 
or no thank you or no but thanks. I, I that word but you know putting that in the middle, it doesn't soften it. It just kind of adds another layer of like ah uh, I feel bad for saying this, throwing that but in there. No but thanks. So I want to just you know challenge you to think about the idea that if it's really about the intention of what that word no means, if you're able to understand and really wrap your brain, wrap your arms around the intention behind the word, then it's going to land differently when you use it. You know, there's a really big difference between a phrase like no way, (laughs) no way, and saying something more like no and thank you. Like energetically, it feels different. And that will lead to how somebody perceives their response or manages their own response. Their, I'm sorry, their own response, right? So let me go back to that. Energetically, it will feel differently. It will land differently when you understand the intention yourself and that will then connect with the person that you're talking to. It's going to impact how they, how they receive it. And ultimately, it's going to impact how they respond, right? It's not cruel or it's not rude or uncaring unless the way that you say it is, okay? So, you know, ask yourself the question, is this genuine? Am I being genuine or is there something here that I'm, you know, maybe afraid of or that I don't want to say because I'm you know, nervous about or worried about the response? Or is it just that I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings? Like those are all legitimate reasons that we use the word no. But at the end of the day, and there's that word, but again, (laughs) at the end of the day, if your response does not in line, does not align with what it is that you're really trying to accomplish, then it doesn't matter if you've said no. Because you're going against what it is that is truly important to you, okay? And so I want to kind of like think about this from a bigger perspective of when you are starting to understand yourself more, right? We're building this, you know, great understanding of our our own needs, our own values, the things that are important to us. You also have to build up those barriers. You also have to build boundaries, And I don't mean barrier as a a wall, a brick wall that you're putting up. That's a whole nother episode. I think I already talked about that in another one. But it's about a boundary. And it's about setting those boundaries in a way that aligns with who you are and what you need to continue to grow, to continue to connect, to continue to be, you know, energetically, um, you know, supporting the things that make you happy and those around you. So I want to use a couple of situations, right? So here's some good scenarios. I, I like to draw back on my own personal experiences when I talk about these different topics. So for example, you know, back in the dating days, which I've been there twice, <laughs> back when I was, you know, younger and then again after my divorce. And I think about, you know, the word no in the way that I was, you know, connecting with people in dating, you know, you meet somebody for a first date, it's just not going really well. And you just need to tell them like, hey, no, this, this isn't going to work. And it was so scary. It was so like, you know, I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. But at the same time, like how I don't, I don't want to go on a second date, you know, you, you need to find a way to say, you know, no, like there's nothing really more to say there. Maybe there's some really nice things you can share. Be like, you know what, you're an awesome person. And, you know, again, we get a little nervous, like, I don't want to just tell somebody they're super nice, but I'm just not interested. Um, what was that, that book, or there was a whole audio series. It was, uh, you know, I'm just not that into you, <laughs> you know, but you know, at some point you got to be able to say this person it doesn't align with the kind of person I'm looking for. So there's a no there and that's okay. That feels good because then you're removing that pressure of having to continue to, 
you know, go on a date or, or communicate with somebody that you've already decided it's a no, right? Um, you know, in, in everyday life, like if you take stock of how often you use the word no, how many times per day or, or per hour, if you have kids, right, do you say the word no? And I want to throw this out there, like what was the purpose that you were saying it or was it effective? You know, like did it do what it needed to do? Did something stop from happening? You know, maybe it did. But ultimately, I want you to think about how did it make you feel? So did it make you feel better um, about the way that you were setting boundaries, perhaps for yourself and for your kids? Did it make you feel better about the way you were setting boundaries for, you know, romantic relationships? When you say no to your kids, for example, is it to protect them? You know, for me, it's like, you know, eating too much junk food. So when they ask for another cookie or um, in my house, it's another piece of, you know, banana bread. My husband's been making banana bread lately, like literally the best banana bread ever. And we seriously fight over it. So, you know, was it to protect? protect the banana bread maybe from getting eaten. (laughs) I don't know. But, you know, sometimes I think about the word no being used to give you something in return. You know, maybe there's an opportunity for, you know, some peace and quiet or some alone time or some work time. And that is an important boundary that is really helpful to set. And sometimes the word no actually does that for us. Um, Another example, when we're in a social situation, you know, do you use the word no as an excuse, perhaps not to socialize? You just want to be left alone after a really busy week. Like today's Friday, I record all of my podcasts on Fridays. And sometimes you just don't want to go out. And that's okay. You know, Saying no to something doesn't mean that you're antisocial, doesn't mean that you're not fun, (laughs) but it can cause that feeling of like concern or worry that somebody's going to think that if you say no and the peer pressure or what have you. So we use it as an excuse and maybe elaborate on it, (laughs) but at the same time, it's okay to just be super upfront and be like, you know what, I just had a really busy week. I'm super excited about starting to watch, you know, uh, a few episodes of the Great British Baking Show on Netflix because it's one of my favorites (laughs) and it's okay. There's no additional justification that needs to happen. It's okay. How about when you say no to um, family? Oh my gosh, this one is hard and, you know... I know from experience, I don't like to disappoint people. I am a recovering people pleaser. (laughs) And I say that genuinely because it is something I do continually try to um, kind of keep my finger on the pulse of that for myself and have a really good balance between what it is that I enjoy doing and giving to people, giving of myself to people without it draining me. Or without it being just a a way to avoid conflict, right? So sometimes by saying no to a family member, it is an avoidance. And it makes sense that you'd want to not cause conflict. But somehow, you know, you can wind up feeling frustrated or annoyed because you didn't set those boundaries, you know? Um, you're just saying it, saying, oh, yes, I'll go do that with this, you know, ugh, <laughs> feeling or rolling of eyes, which I get from, you know, my teenager. Um, but that's another story. But by saying no, you're not necessarily pushing them away. You're just pushing aside, you know, you're, you're pushing aside, you're sorry, by saying yes to doing something, you're putting aside your own feelings of need and worth. And you're allowing someone or something else to come first. And sometimes that's okay. It, it makes sense. And you know when that is, right? Like you know instinctively in your gut, in your heart, that you needed to say no, but you said yes. 
And so it's just an opportunity to step back from that and recognize what's driving that response. Because when you do say no, and when you are able to put those boundaries in place from a place of love, from a place of compassion and care, it feels so good. It really, truly does. And sometimes something just has to give. And it's not giving up, you know, your boundaries. It's able to say, I'm putting this in place for me. And I'm not willing to sacrifice my sanity or my time or my worthiness. This is important. And so I want to challenge you to try it. I just, you know, I want you to play with this. Pretend it's a social experiment, right? And the next time that you get, you know, maybe a text from someone that's asking for your help and you truly don't have the time or maybe you just don't want to be involved. You know, there's something there that just says, this is not for me. I don't want to be involved in this. And it's important that I kind of put myself at arm's length. Give yourself a pep talk and give yourself the permission to say no and just try it. You know, there's a couple of things that may help you with this. And so I'm going to give you a few tips. Okay. So tip number one is think first before you respond. You know, so imagine yourself getting the text from a friend that needs something from you and you are at your capacity. You've got other priorities that are important and that's okay. And you know that, but you just don't want to hurt their feelings. You know that they're not going to probably respond in the way that you would want them to because you've seen it before, right? Historically, this person maybe hasn't responded to you in the way that you would want. So you're inclined to just say yes and you know it's going to drain you. I want you to think, is it just a straight out, like flat out no? Or is there a compromise? Is there, you know, a a happy medium or like a counter offer that you can provide? You know, so it doesn't have to be black or white. It doesn't have to be, you know, one or the other. There's not always a right or wrong. So I want you to just like think first before you respond and consider what those options could be. What are the possibilities? That is an awesome way to look at it. What are the possibilities here? And then try one out. Try one out. You're just never going to know until you do try. Okay. So that's the first tip. Excuse me. The second tip is, you know, you maybe heard it like called the sandwich method where, you know, you sandwich something negative in between two positives. That's not a terrible method, but I prefer to kind of look at it as like putting the no in the midst of acknowledgement and understanding. Okay. So if you show some understanding, you acknowledge that whatever the request is, that like that it's a valid request, acknowledge that there's something here that they need help with. Of course, it totally makes sense that you would reach out and need some assistance with whatever it is that they need. But then also be honest about what you may or may not be able to do, right? Um, And the key here is without a future commitment, unless that works for you. So like the positive in the sandwich can be the acknowledgement piece. It can be this, you know, a compassionate understanding response that says like, I feel for you, you know, this is really difficult. And at the same time, You don't have to commit to being there or doing whatever this is later down the road just to fulfill that positive space, okay? Um, If you believe that's something you can do, it's just maybe a matter of your schedule, then great. Go ahead and, you know, be honest and upfront about that and use it as a way to, you know, kind of back to that first tip as like a compromise or a counter offer, but Throw in that, again, the understanding, the acknowledgement, the caring and compassion from a really genuine place. For the most part, these are people that you do care about, whether it's somebody that you, you know, maybe you met somebody online and it's not working out and you just want to be like, they are a good person and you want them to understand that. But at the same time, you got to put your boundaries in place and be like, hey, you know what? This just isn't, this isn't going to work and this isn't an opportunity. Don't commit to that second date. 
Okay, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> um, if that truly is not going to fit within your, your, um, you know, your scope of interest. Okay. So that's tip number two, kind of a modification on the sandwich method. Tip number three is try not to just avoid or prolong something. So this, you know, these are all kind of interrelated, right? So it's much harder if you make an excuse for why you're saying no, or you lie about it, which, you know, again, you hear that phrase of like, oh, it's just to protect people. I, you know, I didn't tell them or I lied about it because I want to protect them. That doesn't always work. And I'm sure that there are examples that perhaps it does. I'm not an expert on that. I'm not going to say, don't ever lie or make something up. What I'm saying is, if you know that the boundary that you need to set is a no, then don't make it harder with an excuse. It's just not worth it. And it's going to come back again anyways, right? You're just putting it like over there for now and then pretending not to look at it. And it's going to literally stare at you until it comes back again. And you're going to have to still go through this anyways. Okay. So don't avoid or prolong it. Find a way to make, have a response, right? Whatever it is, ground yourself in that and be confident about it and get it done. Get it done. Okay. Tip number four is really about body language. So this obviously doesn't apply if you're having a text conversation with one of your friends and you've got to draw a line in the sand. You know, you you can sometimes find a way to express yourself on the text doesn't always come across the way that you'd want it to. So maybe this way you pick up the phone and have a conversation. But if you are in person and you're having to say no, whether it's in a work environment, which happens a lot, or in a social environment, or, you know, in a, in a you know, a conversation with somebody that you care about, an intimate conversation with a spouse or a partner, like make eye contact. You know, when you're doing this from a place of care and love and compassion, having eye contact shows that beyond the words. It truly does. You know, don't look away. Be present in the conversation, even if, it, if it's on the phone. You know, if it's on the phone, obviously you're not having the eye contact, but you are not multitasking. You know, you're able to put your focus and attention on having the conversation showing how much you care and understand and acknowledge what it is that they've asked for and then set the boundaries in the way that you believe really needs to be. You know, you're on the phone with a family member. Try not to get distracted by cooking or, you know, doing something with the kids. Of course, it's not always avoidable, but really try to say, look, I I really want to talk to you about this and, you know, I understand this is super important, but I want to share with you what's going on with me and kind of, you know, how I may or may not be able to help you, okay? And if text is the only option, well then absolutely do your best. Um, But if you can tell, which usually you can, (laughs) in a text, if somebody is not responding well to it, then think about, is there another way that you can then still engage with them, connect with them, so that the meaning and the true, um, you know, feeling of, you know, where you're coming from comes across in the best possible way. And then finally, the fifth tip is consistency. So here, this is kind of like, you know, related to the whole avoidance piece, but, you know, don't be wishy-washy or apologetic. Like, it's okay to say you're sorry if you truly feel like that you're coming from a place that um, you're not fulfilling something that you can, and it's important to you to show that. But don't be apologetic just because you feel bad for not doing something, period, right? You can't always be the person to, to solve like the world's problems. And sometimes we put that pressure on ourselves, right? To always do it and always be there. And, you know, and when we can't, we apologize for it. So the consistency piece is, you know, showing up. And, res- and showing that these boundaries are really important to you regularly, not just when you're strong enough to say no, that these are boundaries that are important. And 
people around you will understand that. They start to see that and they start to respect those boundaries when you're not wishy-washy, like when you're able to just be straight and own it and, you know, maintain that boundary like you're protecting the fort. You know, you're protecting the treasure, which by the way, is you. Okay. So I want to give you a couple of examples of, you know, some responses. (laughs) And I call this, these, these are the no ands. Okay. So no and instead of the no, but, um, so I'm just, you know, made a few of these up. For example, you know, a friend, uh, the friend social response, no, no. And I can't wait to see you next week. Right. You, you don't have to even say why. That's another thing. You don't have to always say why you can't just again, stand firm in it. No. And I cannot wait to see you next week. Cheers. Okay. Um, how about the, you know, the clingy boyfriend response? No. And I love you to pieces. You know, <laughs> like there's something there that you just, you need some space And the boyfriend is messaging you and you're just like, okay, I need some space. And you, of course, don't want to hurt feelings and you're afraid that you're going to push him away. No. And I love you to pieces. Show that genuine care and compassion. Um, How about the, I call this the enthusiastic husband response, you know, (laughs) where you're trying to get some work done and they got off work early and the kids are going crazy and, you know, you're just trying to get a few things done. No. And let's have a glass of wine at five, right? Give them some, you know, something to look forward to. Okay. I, I like that one. That's one of my favorites. I use that one regularly. Um, how about the, um, the peer pressure business opportunity, right? I hear this one come up and I have no problem usually when I say no to something like this, but sometimes we need a little help. So how about no? And I have no doubt you will be an amazing success, right? That just, that doesn't like throw any judgment out there. doesn't matter at all if you like whatever that business opportunity is. It's just a no. And I have no doubt you will be amazing at this. That makes somebody feel good, right? That feels good. I would love to hear that. Anytime somebody has told me no, just Tell me that, you know, I'll be successful. I love that. Um, how about, you know, this is, this is more comical, I guess. I don't know. It could be helpful for you. The teenager that wants a new car response. I have a few of them in my house <laughs> right now. Two new permit drivers talking about getting new cars. So my response is no. And we'll talk about it when you graduate high school. Right. They don't love that one. That one doesn't always land well, but I, you know. I can't control that. And, and that's something I want to reinforce here too, is that the power is yours and kind of how you choose, you choose how you want to use it. And it may not always be met with a smile or understanding, but at the end of the day, you're in touch with what you need in this moment in time. And you can also adjust it. So if you know that for now, these are important boundaries for you, great, right? Stick to them. But also know that, you know, three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, these may change and you can adjust too. And don't be worried because you've said no before that you can't evolve that, right? So remember, you can't change how somebody else will respond to what you're saying. That is completely out of your control, whether you say yes or whether you say no. You cannot change how they respond. It's just not up to you. Okay. But you can choose the power of this word and how you want to use it and continually reflect on, is it serving you? So there's a few questions that could be helpful to kind of like ask yourself in this moment of reflection. I'm a huge fan of reflection and really being in touch with kind of like what's working. I use the word experiment a lot. We are our own human experiments, social experiments. Like we are continually trying different things to see what's working, what's not working. Is it serving us? How does it make us feel? It's so important to check in with yourself. Even if it's like, you know, your five minute shower and you're just like, okay, let me really think about 
what happened and when I said no to this person. So there's a few questions that you can consider. One of them is, you know, how often do you agree to do what people ask you to do even when it drains you? Like really think about that, you know, take a moment in time, think about, you know, the past week, how often have you agreed to do something even when it drains you, even when you feel completely tapped out? And, and in regards to that, like the secondary piece of that is how long can your body or your mind or your emotions, your stress level withstand this? Like how long can you go? And, and that's a really important check-in because our body will inform us of this, right? It has these natural alarms and things that we know deep down we may not be responding to, but it's telling us. And we really need to listen. And when you think about, again, what you're doing, what you have control over, then the, the question is kind of like, how, how are you able to adjust or change or, you know, reconsider what you're doing without fear of somebody else's response, right? So is the fear of someone's response stronger than your desire to make a change? And if it is, that's something that you're going to want to take a look at. And it's not easy. It's definitely not easy, right? Asking yourself what you're afraid of is like super scary, right? (laughs) And so, but maybe, you know, write it down. Sometimes we're less afraid of putting something on paper than we are having it as a conversation with somebody. Um, But, you know, it's still a conversation to have with yourself. And that reflection, looking in the mirror of those things is so important if you want to make a change. If you're feeling like this just is not working for you, you got to look at it and you got to think about what you can do differently. And so that leads me to this next question, which is, what is one small change that you can make now to bring forward your needs or draw those boundaries that are in alignment with your values? Like, what is just one small change you can make? And maybe in this, you know, this pile of yeses that you feel like you're like constantly saying, yes, 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 yes. And then you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted. I'm so overwhelmed. In that pile of yeses, where can you pull one out? And I call it trading in a yes for a no, right? So if you trade in a yes for a no, you know, a few more yeses for a few more no's in your day, your week, perhaps, it's like, it's like giving up the spare change in your purse or in your wallet in exchange for a new dollar bill. (laughs) So They both have similar value, right? And I'm not dismissing the fact that a yes is still really, can be really valuable. But sometimes the no is more valuable. And so when you trade in some of those yeses for the no that are an important need for you, it's like you feel lighter, you know, getting rid of change and getting a crisp bill. Oh my gosh, I love when my wallet is like all bills and no change. That's just, that's just me but it feels different. It feels better. It feels lighter for me. And so the final question that you can use in this reflection process is when or where or with whom can I now say yes to? Now that I've like removed some of the weight, the extra weight of those no's, where can I use a yes that fills me with more joy? Oh my gosh. That's just like, ah, I just want to breathe more and I get excited thinking about that because it does remove some of the weight and it challenges us to do something differently. And it's not saying that no is bad or yes is good or any of those things, but how is it serving you and how is it making you energetically feel about the things and the people and the commitments that you have in your life. Because man, it's probably full. I know your plates are full. I, I, I've been there. I know how it feels. And your ability to choose how you use these kinds of words and this power that you have to draw those boundaries is so important. 
And it's just a matter of choosing to do that and removing the fear and feeling the joy that sometimes comes with a no and the joy that also comes with the ability to say yes to more things that make you happy. So I hope this was really helpful for you. Gosh, I just really, really love sharing these messages with you all. And I so appreciate you taking the time to listen. If you can take a moment to please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share this with somebody that maybe just needs to hear this. That would be fantastic. Shoot me a message anytime. Hello at robinkoenig.com. Find me on Instagram, rarefind underscore love. And leave me a comment here if you would like. In the meantime, have an absolutely wonderful day and thank you so much for listening.